pools are done. We're going into the winner's bracket where 16 teams were able to make it through, three of which are coming out of the open bracket. And besides that, how about one side of the bracket being absolutely stacked? That and more coming up in this episode. Cod fans, good to see you guys. Welcome back. It's a pleasure being here with you guys. Again, uh, thank you guys for the positive comments that we had after my previous video. You guys have no idea how much that means to me that we can start to build more of a positive community. A number of you guys also actually joined into the Discord channel. So if that was you, welcome. It's good to see you. Some of you guys were a little bit more bashful than others. But if you want to join our Discord, there is a link to it in the description below. Let's get into the action, though, as far as what went on. Because, again, I want to blaze through this and spend some more time predicting the winner's bracket. So in Pool A, we already pretty much knew that E. United was going to be secured after they had finished themselves off 2-0. It just came down to who was going to join them. Celtic made a pretty good uh, conversation piece from day number one, but they would have to clutch up as they finished off 1-1. One one. Elevate was also 1-1, one one. so it came down to what would happen between e United and Elevate and RBL and Celtic. Unfortunately for Celtic, they would actually lose the set versus RBL. Elevate would not win theirs though either, but due to the map count and the simple fact that Elevate held a head-to-head uh, -head win over RBL, Elevate got in. Celtic do not make it through the pool. I'm baffled by it. I thought that they would have been in getting there for free, but they weren't able to beat RBL, which is... <laughs> Shout outs to RBL, I suppose, but big looks for that Celtic squad not to be able to get through. A lot of high expectations were going in for them, and two real in the RBL squad just absolutely handled them. I don't know if it was just map pools or what it was, but Celtic did not look like themselves today, and that's the way Call of Duty goes sometimes. Sometimes you just don't show up and play well the day that it matters. Again, most of these early pools are pretty easy ones going through. Again, in Pool B, we already knew what was going to be happening with Gen G and Enigma 6, as Enigma 6 was able to go 2 0 to start, Gen G 0 and to, and with the map differential, Genji was pretty much out of the running for even a three-way tie scenario. And with both Team War and Fuego being at one and one, it came down to who would be able to take the set between Team War and Fuego. A couple of scary moments early for Team War in the hard point, but it wasn't much of a contest. War absolutely stomped on him, and that little bit of fire that Fuego had did not carry into Team War. They looked really good, uh, flat out. Team War looked really, 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 really good. So definitely a team to keep an eye out for, I think, when you get into the pool play. Uh, or pardon me, when you get into the bracket play in specific. In Pool C, FaZe Clan was doing well. Units was doing well. We already knew that FaZe and Units were going to get through because they both went 2-0. and oh. Mazer and Animosity both went 0-2, oh and two, so we knew that they were going to be going home. It just came down to at which placement did you finish off. Phase Clan did not have too much of an issue with units. It was a 3-0. It was a little bit close at times during certain maps, but Phase they looked pretty polished. They looked pretty complete. And uh, this units team, I just can't really see them doing a whole lot. But they did show signs of life, like we mentioned, in the hard point as well as in the search and destroy. And then uh, beyond that, they just have not looked very good in the control. So that's my biggest worry for this units team. I thought Mazer would get out of this pool. Units were able to get the job done. A big surprise, I think, for Mazer, who were only able to beat Animosity. Um, it's not what you want to see. Again, that set that they played versus Mazer was the first one out. It went game five. So, again, you kind of hate to see that. In Pool D, um, it, we knew that Reciprocity, after losing to Envy, was going to be in a spot where they essentially would have had to beat Sage because Envy was 2-0, and Legend status was 0-2. So, it came down to Reciprocity versus Sage as far as who got in, who didn't, and it would be a pretty convincing 3-0 for Reciprocity. Um, that's about all I have to say. How about Envy, though? Three games, all of them going to map five in the pool, including one versus Legend status. Big question marks, I think, for Envy. They're on the easier side of the bracket that you'll see, um, but I don't know if you can really label it as an easy side of the bracket because this Envy team looks completely like they're all over the place. Going into Pool E, this is where, again, we started to deal with teams that had to have multiple scenarios. Now, Singularity would start the day off with a win versus Vanity at 3-0, so they were essentially locked in to make the playoffs regardless. UYU, LG, and Vanity all had some hopes coming through up until Vanity lost. It was between LG and UYU. 
LG able to beat UYU in game five. It then would come down to map count potentially as we were going to be looking at both them and UYU at 1-1 totals. Again, it just came down to would Singularity beat UYU and would Luminosity be able to get their map total up. They were able to do both of those things as Singularity survive UYU. A little bit of a scare there, interestingly enough. Um, and LG would have no problem at all with Vanity. So... The two map fives that we saw today were LG versus UYU and Singularity versus UYU. And a couple of very interesting moments where, again, UYU had an opportunity to close out LG at one point in time. It came down to a 1v1 for a search and destroy uh, methods versus uh, Skies, and it went the way of Skies in a very heated uh, last battle on the Jet statue. If you missed that clip, you need to go check Reddit. It'll be out there somewhere. I don't want to fill up the video with clips, but it was a pretty entertaining moment. Uh, UYU was up big. They had a war machine. They had streaks. They found a team kill with the war machine. Streaks only found one. It didn't really go. It was the most UYU you think that could have possibly happened um and it did so lg would be able to get through they squeak on in though again big concerns for lg as they move on through in pool f 100 thieves would be able to take care of fury essentially cementing their spot up top sicario though how about this were able to beat midnight so with that early win it came down to essentially can sicario beat fury and what would happen in map differential if midnight were to beat 100 thieves there were a couple of tie scenarios that could have potentially been there we wouldn't see any of that happen because 100 Thieves took care of Midnight without much of a problem. And even easier, Sicario absolutely dominated Fury. But the set, Sicario versus Midnight, that's one you're going to want to go back and rewatch if you're looking for one to rewatch because it was a good one. 205, 250, 250, 188 were the hard points. 6 2 and 6 5 were the search and destroys. And then. One of my bigger concerns for Sicario was their control. They did not look very good versus Midnight in the control on frequency. But that being said, Sicario, they'll be the ones going through in Midnight, who I thought would be, it would be between them and Sicario, um, as far as who got in. Sicario were able to get the job done in five, so that's the way it be sometimes. That kind of sucks, because I think this Midnight team is better than a lot of the teams that made it into the playoff bracket. They were just in a difficult pool, um, and you have to win those games out versus Sicario. They weren't quite able to do it. They also had a pretty decent showing versus 100 Thieves, just again, not quite able to do it. In Pool G, this is the Optic Pool, and after Optic and Evil Geniuses would take care of the two open teams in their first sets, they would cement themselves as being in the pools, or out of the pools, into the bracket, just came down at which seating, and uh, well, Optic did not have too much of an issue with Evil Geniuses. The only real issue would come down to uh, the gridlock control, where Evil Geniuses stomped them, and then uh, there was a seaside hard point where Evil Geniuses were actually up. A couple of weird spawns would happen while both teams were contesting for Fountain. Optic would get the spawns closer in P1. EG spawned all the way out by P2. The journey was too much. They couldn't get there in time, and Optic would cement a little bit of a comeback. But this Evil Geniuses team, honestly, both hard points I felt like were very achievable for them. Um, the Search and Destroy was a different story. It was 1 6. So definitely some looks to do there. We'll talk about that more here in a minute. And then Pool H, the last one up, it came down to Splice and Heretics early, and Splice didn't have a problem really with Heretics whatsoever. And Aspire being able to beat Hybrid meant that as we got into the later part of the day, it would be between Heretics and Aspire. Who would take it? Who would get in? The answer would be Heretics, as they found themselves one of the easier three that I've seen so far not the greatest look from Aspire um, you really do kind of hate to see that I thought Aspire looked uh, pretty good when it came down to the CMG scouting ground so a little bit of a disappointment that they weren't able to quite break through but that's the way it goes hybrid would finish uh, of course in the last place spot Aspire in the third place spot so that's how things break down there let's take a look as far as what that means for the winners bracket and uh, this is an interesting bracket because you look at the left side of the bracket as I have it panned up here and as specifically you look at the bottom left part of the bracket which is where Team Envy is, they've got a pretty easy run of things. At least so they, I mean, everything is in the in the works for them to finish top four potentially just by getting to the winner's semifinals if they're able to win two games. They, they very well could. They're on the easier side of the bracket, I think, for a lot of people's minds. But it just comes down to will they be able to actually do anything. As we take a look at it, though, up top, E United and Team War, I, this would be an interesting one. E United has looked very good so far all across the board. They're four and one as they approach their hard point with an average that looks very, very tasty indeed. It is 
is a 244 to 127. They've been smoking people um, on the hard point specifically. Their search and destroys also looked pretty good, with, with the exception of the loss to Fuego. It was a 4 6 loss there, and their control has looked good. For Team War, Kind of the same situation. They're 2-1 and one in every single mode so far. Their averages are also pretty healthy. Much closer in the search and destroy and the control than what United has to offer. But they've been looking very good in their hard point as well. So, it just comes down to... What will happen between these two teams? I think mostly in the respawn. Search and Destroy, I still give an edge to EU United because of their experience, but I think that this Team War squad can absolutely frag them in the respawn. So it just comes down to where do they play? Are they going to play on maps that they're comfortable with? EU United's played a lot of Seaside so far, and War got smoked by Enigma 6 there, so you figure they probably don't want to go back there. Just comes down to what the veto process looks like for that one in specific. Going to Splice versus EG. How about this one? Um, in the history... Splice has beaten Evil Geniuses twice, but they were both 3-2s. Most recently, it was at Anaheim and just after Anaheim. At this event in specific, no one's really talking a lot about Splice, and I'm kind of curious to it because they've looked insane in their control so far. Everything's been a 3-0 except for 1-3-1. They're 3-0 in the modes completely. They're also 4-0 in the hard point. So Marky B's definitely got the team tuned up when it comes down to their respawn game. For Evil Geniuses, we've seen that their control game is also very excellent. Their hard point, there were a couple of moments that they kind of let loose. But more specifically, they have not looked super great in the search and destroy. The only win that they have is a 6-4 versus Carnage. It means they lost to Trainheart. It was a 3-6. So... This one, I think, comes down to who wins the Search and Destroy, and uh, if Splice, I think this one's got Game 5 written all over it, but I think Splice, with their Search and Destroy record, um, are going to be looking very strong there. You slip down a little bit further, a Singularity and Sicario. How about this one? Both teams are going to be coming out of the open bracket. Singularity, though, is getting my favor in the matchup, simply because I trust in Phoenix. Uh, he's their coach, and they've been doing an incredible amount of analysis work. I think he's going to sit down there and watch the VODs. The only downside to this is there's not going to be as much information about about a team like Sicario. But you look at the raw stats alone, this is a team that has a positive average in hardpoint, although it's close. They're also 4-0 and in Search and Destroy, which is very impressive, and they've also looked pretty good when it comes to the control. On the other side of things, Sicario also a bit touchy in the hardpoint. They're just 2-2 two and two there. Also looks good in the Search and Destroy, 3-1 and one there, and also a bit touchy in the control. So this is a very even matchup. I honestly feel like this one's going to come down to who's going to have the most preparation, because so far, with Singularity having beaten luminosity and uiu it really felt like they were taking them to maps that they knew that those teams weren't so great at and what comes down to the search and destroy specifically you got two teams that are very good at search are they going to be able to you know battle up against each other on maps that are favored to them or there will be a little bit of trickiness in the veto process. And then finishing th things off, Envy has not played units yet, at least not this current team. Uh, they played Denial previously. They've played, you know, parts of this team, but not fully completely. And this Envy team scares the living daylights out of me. Honestly, I think my favorite's going to go to units when it comes down to it, simply because... Envy have not looked very good anywhere. Their Surge and Destroy have had a couple of great moments, a couple of really scary losses. Their control has gone round five every single time, and they're three and three in their hard points with just about an even average. So that means that they're losing and winning at about the same pace. There is nothing convincing about this team so far. Their best mode is still Search and Destroy, but there have been some scary moments. They looked like garbage on Arsenal, which isn't one of their best maps, to be fair, but Legend Status absolutely opened them up. So... It's going to be interesting to see. For units, on the other hand, they've looked pretty good when it comes to their hard points specifically. Their only loss was a 215 to 250, and that was against FaZe. Their search and destroy has been a little bit all over the place, and their control has been a little wonky. But this is going to be a really, really good map, I think. And then as we transition and look over at the right side of the bracket, you got FaZe Clan versus Reciprocity and 100 Thieves and Luminosity. Those right there are four of the top six placements from Miami and some of the highest average placements when it comes down to it at the end of the day in one side of the bracket. Optic go up against Heretics, and Enigma 6 go up against Elevate. you got to love that if you're an E6 fan, I think, generally speaking. So as you take a look at Phase versus Reciprocity, the head-to-head -head here favors that of Phase. 2-1 to one is the head-to-head. 8-3 -head. is the map total. Last time they played, though, was just after London. It was a 3-0 for Phase. Phase has looked great when it comes down to their hard points specifically. They've looked, they've looked great, period. They've bullied everybody, including, I mean, the only scare they had was today versus uh, was versus units, and that was in mostly their search and destroy and a little bit of issue with their uh, hard point, but 
the other four maps they played in hardpoint were barely over 100 points for two of them and underneath the 100 point club for the other two so phase looking as dominant and ever when it comes down to the respawn specifically reciprocity has looked more complete as a team but they've looked really all over the place with search and destroy which blows my mind a 1-6 loss to team envy and around 11 loss to team envy and search and destroy and then their hard point has been very consistent but again a couple of scares here or there where you feel like you should be able to close things out and they're not quite able to do so on the good news for reciprocity this team has been pummeling people in control so that's what you want to see i think when you're going into phase who looked a little bit touchy when it came down to it at one point in time 100 thieves and luminosity I'll tell you right now, Luminosity is not looking nearly as strong as you would like to think that they are. The best they've looked so far have been on maps that they typically go to. Hard point frequency, they played once, 250 to 81. Gridlock, Search and Destroy, their second best map, 2-6-1s there. And then Control, Seaside, one of their best ones, a 3-0 there. Everything else has been losses, for the most part. Arsenal, two losses on hard point. Um... Payload, one loss on Search and Destroy. Losses on Arsenal and Frequency Control. Meanwhile, for 100 Thieves, uh, this team has looked just as good as ever. Um, the only time that the only hard point that they've lost so far was against Midnight, where it was 248 to 250, which honestly they should have closed out, but a couple of things go wrong with streaks, and that kind of happens. They've been perfect, though, pretty much throughout that. They did lose the control to, to uh, Fury, but you got to be feeling comfortable about 100 Thieves being able to take down LG, though. Optic and Heretics would be up next. This is a matchup that very much so favors Optic the last three times they've played. It's been all wins for Optic. Um, that's actually the three times that they have played total. 9-2 and two in the maps last time they met was just after Anaheim as well as at Anaheim. It was a 3-2 and a 3-0 in those two instances. Optic has looked great when it comes down to their hard point. They've looked great when it comes to their search and destroy, and they've looked pretty darn good when it comes to their... Um, control with the exception of playing up against evil geniuses today on gridlock the biggest concern i have is what is this team going to be able to offer us besides just gridlock control because it's all they've played so far and when you go back into their history some of the other maps have been a little bit sketchy for them but heretics they looked great today um when I mean, they had to play up against aspire specifically but they did not look nearly as great when they played up against splice so you have to favor optic in this head-to-head -head, um two and one across every single map mode combination so far for heretics and then you finish things off e6 and elevate this one's going to be e6 all the way i can't see a, a world where elevate's able to take down the caliber of opponent like enigma six again this elevate team snuck into the bracket i don't really think they deserve to be here um and i just don't see them being able to take a map from enigma six so they look super prepared they're looking super fresh uh, they're holding some of the best averages and again they've only lost one map and that was to fuego 182 250 on seaside hardpoint where anything can happen so betting wise specifically uh, I would say keep your eye open for that Singularity and Sicario line, as well as the Unit's Envy line potential there. I think 100 Thieves is pretty much guaranteed versus Luminosity. I think the Phase Reciprocity game should be close, but I favor Phase in it. Optic should be a pretty easy one versus Heretics. Enigma 6 pretty easily over Elevate. The Team War United one could be pretty close as well. Um, I would just say to take your best judgment based on what you heard today. Uh, when we come back next time around, we'll be kind of going through the bracket as well as showing the Losers bracket. Um, I'll again, if you're interested in doing betting conversations and things like that, please make sure you join my Discord. We talk about it in real time as lines get posted. Hopefully, Bavada will be pretty good about it if you work in the if you're looking to bet in the united states let me know i can send you my referral code and you can uh, we can kind of share a little bit of a bonus there when you sign up initially so uh if you're interested in that again leave a comment below otherwise we'll catch you guys for the recap after our first day of the bracket hope you guys have a good one until next time hope you keep holding it down later later bye bye